the dark hour exhibition. And it kind of portrayed what artists were going through at that time. This, this, this whole epidemic is stressing us out so much that we don't know what to do. We find ourselves carrying luggages through the pandemic. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ndombeka Yamakaza. I am the Senior Manager for Department of Sports, Recreation, Arts and Culture. Uh, at the Nelson Mandela uh, Metro District. Uh, today is a very special day and I am excited and feel very uh, honored and privileged uh, to officially open um, the Dark Hour exhibition. I'm the manager of the Art Tech Gallery. I'm also the curator for The Dark Hour. Um, the Dark Hour is an exhibition which is a collaboration between the Art Tech Gallery and Desreg. In this exhibition, artists will use different mediums when expressing themselves. They will be using 2D and 3D, that is drawing, painting, printmaking and sculpture. My name is Brian Newfield, born in Port Elizabeth, grew up in the Grew up in the, in, the, in the dusty streets of the northern areas. My name is Banele Jadai. I'm a visual artist, full-time visual artist. I'm working at Artec Gallery in Port Elizabeth. These guys are, are, are house, household names around here, PE. The Dark Hour, why have we named this exhibition as the Dark Hour? And when the topic came about, it came about with the present predicament that we are facing as a nation of a coronavirus pandemic and how it impacted on the livelihood of the artist not being able to make an ends meal, not being able to create the artwork and not being able to interact with one. And what was left was them to view what the world was actually uh, projecting to them. And the world projects a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety, and a lot of confusion. The sadness, fear, loneliness, death, survival, tension, or peace, mayhem, and the behavioral shift that the pandemic has brought to the society at large. We find ourselves carrying luggages through the pandemic. And, and um, it's these luggages that pushes us back, that pushes us back and forcing us not to live our lives the way we wanted to live. All of the sudden, everything that you were used to doing in a normal way, now it was a challenge and now it was questioned, now it was scrutinized, now you had to answer, now you had to explain, now you have to wash your hands seven times a day, now you have to cover your mouth, now you have to do a lot of things that you weren't used to. Our comes and our goals are being restricted. Factories are closing down. People are losing, losing their minds. Families are losing family members. Our education, the children, our children can't go to school. There were the times that our children couldn't go to school. You, you, you don't know what to expect. In this exhibition, emphasis will also be on ways to revive hope. And that is why I started using uh, children I use my subject matters as children because children, even though they know, they are aware of, of what's around, what's going on around us. They hear by our, our parents, they hear by their peers, they hear by the, by, by, by the elders. But still, still they, the, innocence, the, the innocence of a child is something that you can never take away. We will get through this. We will get through this by, with, 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 with faith, like the faith of a child, the happiness of a child, the harmony of a child. We will get through all this in due time. 
I've used a, a sort of a clock type uh, effect on, on this artwork, which for me, that circle is, is, is more like a circle of life then the clock is, is going round and round. It's just for me to tell them that they, there's always a next, a, a next day, there's always a next hour, there's always a next minute, there's always a next day. They can always reinvent themselves. They must not lose hope. These artists have used the visual metaphors to contextualize the concept to engage the viewer. The dark hour kind of revealed from the spiritual, from the physical, from the um, race also in terms of understanding the dynamics of how we are. Like for example, there were a lot of uh, uh, artworks, not a lot, like a couple of artworks that kind of represented the, the, the claustrophobia of how other people felt during lockdown, not being able to have spaces and then because they were told to stay at home while the home is like a small space and how also lockdown in other artists it represented enforcement and like being taken out of a comfort zone and how they were forced it was made into becoming like a, a state of policing where people were restricted e -e 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 walks were restricted the activities out and some others it brought about the, the insanity that of how people like um, reveal their uh, can psychological, some I could say disorders in per se, their psychological ills like depression, uh, bipolar, and how those things they emanate. And gender-based violence was also like a, a theme that kind of popped out. And furthermore, these artists individually connected emotionally with the concept in order to enhance an emotional-driven outcome. Bringing together artists and ideas always ignites hope and further promotes awareness around the pandemic. This body of work provides more channels of dialogue, using visual art as a tool to communicate, and most importantly, to intrigue the intuitive mind of the artist and the viewer to further promote hope as they engage with the final product. Furthermore, this interaction or dialogue also remind artists that we are artists within affected global society. So we would like to, to, to thank very much our partners that have collaborated with us, the ATEC Gallery Board members, the Gallery Curator, the Arts Fraternity at Large, the Arts Scholars, Enthusiasts and Investors, as well as the Nelson Mandela Art Museum for extending this invitation to the larger arts community.